Okay, uh, th uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Hal Shirtliff with Camp Constitution, and I well, thank you for watching. We're at our monthly luncheon here in beautiful Reading, Massachusetts, and I want to thank you folks for coming, and those of you who are watching. I'm going to give a presentation. Thank that you already had your meals, because it's on this evil, wicked thing called the plastic bag. Here it is right here, folks, so don't get too scared. Now, if you listen to the leftist, Marxist narrative, these plastic bags, when you only use them one time, they somehow sneak out of your house into the sewage system, into the, and all the way from Boston to the Pacific Ocean with one thing in mind, to kill whales. That's the narrative. And by banning these things, we're saving the planet. Of course, this also puts a big hole, ozone hole in the sky and also uh, the, the carbon footprint because uh, of CO2. So we stop using these uh, and CO2 will be dramatically lowered all over the world. Well, that's not the real case about these things, by the way. Now, uh, these bans have been, been initiated all over the country, uh, California, uh, towns and cities all over the United States, uh, including here in Boston just recently, December 14th of 2018. I had a letter published in this, uh, this week's um, uh, was a weekly newspaper, the, the, the bulletin. And I said, they, the ban went into effect on the 14th. I said, they should have added insult to injury, made it on the 16th of December which of course is the Boston Tea Party celebration. So uh, I want to give some facts and figures about the bag. And before I do this, I want to mention I am not part of the evil, wicked plastic bag lobby. There is a plastic bag lobby. Uh, unfortunately, when I look on their, go to their website, I, they're, all, they're trying to say, oh, the bags are good for the, I mean, they're good for the, there's some facts there, but they're afraid to mention something called Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030. And if you don't identify the enemy, you're just putting out a brush fire. You're going to put out the arsonist. <clears throat> so, uh, and Camp Constitution recently put together uh, a two-page flyer, Don't Ban the Bag, Bag the Ban. It's up on our website. If you go to our, uh, it's a nice, you know, full color. This is just something I just printed out. We just worked out the little typos, and we like the thing we got it right this time. So if you go to our website, campconstitution.net, where you'll learn about our wonderful family, Camp 2, by the way, and this year it's going to be in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. You're also going to, uh, you'll see a drop down with, say, downloads. And on the very last one, you can download this free of charge. You can take the information. This information came from different sources, the Heartland Institute, some of my own observations, and other groups you know, that have been talking about this and uh, trying to expose it. One of the groups I recommend is the American Policy Center, led by Tom DeWeese, but I'll get into that a little bit later. So let's look at some facts about the plastic bag. First fact is, what's the Constitution's position on banning? bags or banning other things. Well, there's something called the Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, um, Paragraph 3, or Clause 3. And the reason why, one of the biggest reasons why the founders wrote this Constitution that we're under is because under the Articles of Confederation, the federal government or the, had no control over the states and what they did. So a state of Massachusetts could put a, put a tax on stuff coming in from New, um, New Hampshire, but maybe not Rhode Island. And there was a lot of other issues, but that was one of them. So the Commerce Clause basically said that, uh, that the federal government is able to regulate. And when, it mean, when they said regulate, it didn't mean that they were going to come in and control it. It was a negative force. So Massachusetts or you know, subdivisions called towns, cities, and counties couldn't do anything that contradicts the Constitution. So Boston is now saying to every single retailer that uses bags, and almost everyone does, uh, that you can no longer buy this product, and many of the bags are made you know, in, in other states. So they say you can't buy and use this product, because we determined it to be a negative thing. And so that to me is a clear violation of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3. It's also a violation of the Massachusetts Constitution. Uh, not only have they banned this bag, they've also said to the uh, business owner, you must charge 5 to 10 cents when you check out. Now, I just went to CVS yesterday, Consumer Value stores, Drug Store, and I spent about $70. I had to buy a thermometer for my wife's daycare business. One of my girls had to get a prescription and a few other things. $70 I've spent, and they still want to charge me, you know, five to ten cents, you know, to two or three bags. I refused. So they not only are they banning one thing, but they're forcing you to sell something else, either a bag that's plastic, or a recycled bag. Sounds like healthcare. You better believe it. You're forced. So uh, there's some facts about the plastic bag that need. To, first off, 
this plastic bag is, most of these are made in the United States by U.S. workers. Now, the left, the Democrats, in Boston, it, with this ban was unanimously passed, all the Democrats. A generation ago, go, Democrats always, or usually, looked out for the interest of the American worker. They were against things like NAFTA. Today, now, uh, they're not so interested. In fact, most of these reusable bags are made in China. either China or Vietnam, and I'll get into that a little bit more. So that's the first issue. Uh, these are 100% recyclable. How many people use these plastic bags? Other reasons besides, uh, you know, single use. My wife has a daycare <coughs> business. Just what we put in these. In her daycare. Ah, you got it. Okay. Also trash liners. Also, when you have garbage, especially in the warmer weather. Hey, you, you, the trash goes out Monday, you get some garbage Tuesday, you're not going to throw it in the trash, you get all kinds of animals. So you put it in the freezer. So it's a freezer bag. And there are many other uses for it too. And my friend Professor Willie Soon told me that they're, they're doing a study, a report on this. He said there's a lot of critters in the wild that use these things for different things too. These bags are only, only about 0.5 of the municipal streams. So the trash is in the, you know, your, your town dump, 0.5%. That's a little small amount. Now they say that these things get and they, they get into the trees and they get here and there. Well, there are laws against litter. There's a lot of other things. Like how about broken bottles? Broken bottles are a little more dangerous. Broken glass a little more dangerous than plastic bags, but they ban these. And there's many other facts that are. I'll just run over a few of them. Um, plastic grocery bags require 70 percent less energy to manufacture than paper bags. The production of plastic bags consume less than four percent of the water needed to make paper bags. Now think of a paper bag, it takes seven truckloads of paper bags to equal one truckload of plastic bags. And just think, uh, uh, when, and also these paper bags, they're used, most of them are used by wood products, wood byproducts. So uh, in fact, I remember when the plastic bag was the best feature, they said we're going to give you plastic over paper because it's more, less harmful to the environment. And let's see, um, plastic bags produce fewer greenhouse gases per use than paper or cotton bags. Uh, plastic uh, reuse of reusable and paper bags take up more space than a plastic bag in a landfill. So now what about this reusable bag? Now if you're a consumer and you prefer to use this, you have every right to do that. That's fine. I have no problem with you buying these, but there's some things you should know about it. As I mentioned earlier, most of these are made in communist countries. Uh, so and all that they have to be shipped here. And they put them on big ships. And the ships are not run by wind turbines or solar panels. They're run by fuel, you know, fossil fuels, right? And it takes about 132 uses of one, one of these bags to equal the environmental impact of one of these bags, right? But there's some things that I've learned since then. Because, again, I'm not, I don't use these very often, so it's not an issue with me. These get pretty dirty. And Ari there was an Arizona study recently that said that 8% only 8% of the bags are actually washed. But when you're washing bags, are you using hot water and more energy? You know, so again, a more, more negative impact on the, on the... So when somebody goes in and buys some produce this week, or buy, buy some meat, and some of the stuff leaks in, the next week they buy something else, E. coli. There's been some E. coli problems. And my son, who used to work in a grocery store, said some of these bags are filthy. People are bringing these real... All of us here, of course, are spotlessly clean people, but not everybody is. So they're bringing these dirty, filthy bags into grocery stores uh, that would usually have strong standards against stuff like this, right? But there's something else that I kind of learned recently. Uh, critters like these bags. Cockroaches. So instead of calling this a reusable bag, let's use a marketing term. How about a cockroach motel? Oh. Then, it, then it will give a different, I said, oh my goodness. So, <laughs> so uh, it's a little different spin on it, right? And I guess there have been examples where people have come in, you know, put bags down, and uh, I don't think there are too many grocery stores that say, oh yeah, it happened to us all the time. I don't want to admit that, you know, bugs come in, uh, uh, vermin come in through other sources. So those are just some of the, some of the reasons. Now, I do want to present to you the, the wicked stepbrother step of the plastic bag is the straw. I don't, I don't use straws that much. I think I used one today. But I didn't realize these are also evil. California just recently banned these horrible things, right? Um, I'm being facetious, of course. What? Oh, yes, this. There are a number of towns and cities around the country that have banned this plastic water bottle. And we know because it's not environmentally friendly. Uh, this happens to be a Poland Spring. 
Concord, Massachusetts, uh, several years ago, banned this. You can't get a bottle of water like this in Concord. Now, I remember back in the 70s when uh, it was in vogue to drink spring water. I mean, if you drank spring water, you were probably into physical fitness. You ate right, and you drank right. Now, they're telling us we need to drink more tap water. This is loaded with uh, all kinds of junk and some. Some tap water. Boston tap water is pretty good compared to other parts of the country. But you go to some place, like Lawrence, Massachusetts, they get that water right out of the Merrimack. And of course, it's, it's, it's um, you know, they, they try to purify it, but it doesn't taste it good, you know. So, interesting too, how one group is attacked through this ban, but there's another group. Now, how about the newspaper plastic bag? Isn't this as wickedly as evil? If, if, this is, if this is evil, can't their, their uh, close relative be as wicked? This, by the way, the Boston Globe, which no doubt puts, uh, supports this plastic bag ban, uh, sends this to, I think, every person in Greater Boston once a week. Do you get one of these? Not that paper. No, I, we don't subscribe. These are just, these are unsolicited. They just toss this on our, and many times it doesn't get to our front lawn or our door. It gets to the sidewalk where it really becomes litter. And in fact, in my daily walks, I might pick some of these up. And by the way, I believe in stewardship. I hate litter. I think most of us, I think conservatives who love, who believe in property rights, respect public property too. We believe in private property and therefore we also respect public or government property. Show me uh, a Tea Party, the aftermath of a Tea Party rally, and it's probably as clean as it was. Show me an Earth Day concert, the, the aftermath of an Earth Day concert, and you're going to see a clean, and then the environment prior, and then after you're going to see probably a lot of filth and trash and crap. Just look at, look at the old Woodstock, uh, <laughs> any Woodstock uh, films and see how that was. So, but what's really behind this? And this is something that some people just don't want to touch. It's something called Agenda 21. And it's been rebranded. It's interesting, too. I was talking to Tom DeWeese this morning. I said, you know, I get these alerts, online alerts, when certain, you know, Kent Constitution or my name or uh, Agenda 21 comes up. And I'll get reports from European sources, Australian, and other parts of the world. They use Agenda 21 all the time. But here, you don't see it. They use sustainable development. Uh, the city of Boston was a member of an entity called the International Council for Local Environmental Initiative, ICLE, which was formed at the UN headquarters in New York City two years before Agenda 21, before they had the meeting in Rio de Janeiro uh, that launched Agenda 21. And one of the uh, supporters of Agenda 21, he wrote a little book about it. It's like a cliff note, a sort of version of the 40, 40 chapter document. He said that this will be binding on all human beings on the planet. Not something you just sort of do because you want to do it, it's the right thing or what, it's going to be forced upon you. And when he said that, most people weren't paying attention. And people say, even a lot of people in our conservative circles don't want to say Agenda 21. It's a conspiracy theory. Go online and find it. You see Nancy Pelosi on YouTube trying to get a resolution passed promoting it. I have a little booklet, in fact I'm doing a full-blown presentation next week in West Springfield. We get all kinds of documents, it's just that most people don't are aware of it. When I'm in the supermarket the last couple of weeks and people are complaining about it, I ask them, you ever hear of Agenda 21? No. That's telling me that I'm not doing enough because they should know. Did you see the local, with the Boston Globe do an expose on this? If they even mention it, they'll mention it in a, you know, in a, in a negative manner. It's, oh, some people believe in this, uh, this UN conspiracy theory. It's no theory. It's no conspiracy. It's what they plan to do. And uh, we have some success. Uh, in fact, I mentioned Texas. In Texas, they, uh, Laredo, Texas, some, some of the vendors said, no, we're not going to abide by this, and they fought it, and they won. So if you're a vendor, if you're a ho or even a wholesaler, or anybody, uh, please look, get, get in touch with us, uh, campconstitution.net, our website. Uh, we have a Facebook page. You can contact us. That's the best way to contact us. We'll do presentations on this. We think we can be successful. Get, download this free uh, this little uh, <coughs> website, this uh, little download we have on our website, and just copy and paste and take the information out. Just do your own research and come up. You know, there might be some facts that I have not presented in this little presentation that should be incorporated in this. But that's really the bottom line. And today it's going to be the plastic bag. Tomorrow it's going to be the internal combustion engine. You know, and there's other things to look at too. This so-called re renewable energy. Again, if it's mar free market driven, I'm all in favor of it. Like recycling, free market driven, we should do more of it. 
if you know, it takes a lot of energy to come to get a truck to pick it up and then bring it to a center that processes it sometimes it's a negative impact so you're not really making you hurting the environment so that I want to thank you for watching and for more information just visit our website campconstitution.net